Hi Kent House and big hello to everyone in year one. Today I'm going to be reading a book called Free the Whales and it's a short chapter book that happens to be by my uncle called Jamie Ricks. I'm going to read you the blurb first and then I'm going to read you the first half of the story. Alistair McAllister loves his Free the Whales t-shirt. He wears it all day and every day until it starts to smell. And smell. But he won't let his mother wash it. Whales can't roam free in a washing machine, he says. The whales, though, have other ideas. <clears throat> Chapter 1 Under normal circumstances, if a whale sits on your chest, you're dead. You're flattened flatter than a flat iron flatfish. So how come Alistair McAllister had three whales sitting on his chest at the same time and lived to tell the tale? There's Alistair. Did he have a rubber body? Did he pump iron? Did he tie a thousand helium balloons to the whale's tails? Well, of course not. The whales were printed on his favourite T-shirt. Free the whales, screamed the, big, screamed the bright red slogan splashed across his belly. While on his chest, three cute killer whales squirted spouts of salty seawater into his armpits. Here's his t-shirt. Alistair McAllister loved his Free the Whales t-shirt more than he loved marshmallow spread with marmalade, more than floppy ploppy bunnies with velvet poofs for paws, more even than spaghetti bolognese. It fitted him just right. Not too big and not too small. Not too pinchy under the arms and not too long and lumpy for tucking into shorts. Not too tight around the neck, but not too baggy either, which was important, because baggy neck t-shirts let the wasps in. <clears throat> Alistair McAllister's t-shirt was like a second skin, only with whales tattooed on. And like a second skin, Alistair McAllister never took it off. He wore it all day, every day. For birthday parties, for backwards bicycling, for window whistling, for prawn purchasing, for hairy hopscotch, and for school rule falling. For seaside tripping, to give the whales a glimpse of home. For granny salad dressing making, for tiger tickling, for TV stewing. For insect interrogating, for laughing at lorries, for nose hole moling. For best and for bed. But never, not ever, no, never for fishing. Lest he accidentally give offence to the whales and make them disappear. Because for Alistair McAllister, the whales were the thing. The cotton was comfortable, but the whales were Alistair McAllister's friends. He liked their smiles. Chapter 2 One morning, while he was admiring his whales in the mirror, Alistair McAllister decided to give them names. You're Willie, you're Wally, and you're Walter, he said. And you're Smelly, said his mother, approaching McAllister from behind with a long pair of wooden pincers. You've been wearing that t-shirt for three months. It's time to take it off. But Alistair McAllister wouldn't let her touch it. He turned himself into a tortoise by curling up into a tight ball and hiding under a cardboard box. It's cruel, he sobbed. Willy Wally and Walter hate washing machines. They're just pictures, said his mother. And you're just horrid, blubbed Alistair McAllister. Whales are born to roam the open seas, not to be crammed inside a stuffy old washing machine and spun around and round until they're sick. So the t-shirt stayed on. Three months later it was stiff with goo and smelled like a vase of dead flowers. No matter how many cans of air freshener his mother bought, the stink still lingered. She even wore a clothes peg on her nose. But the smell seeped through. Eventually it was so bad that she hatched a plot to steal the t-shirt 
while Anister McAllister was asleep. That night, she crept into his bedroom and rolled him onto his side. Then she snapped on a pair of rubber gloves and gently started to peel the T-shirt off his back. Unfortunately, as she tugged it over his head, the wicked whiff wafted up his nostrils and kick-started his brain. Alistair McAllister sat up in bed and scowled. His mother innocently pretended she was checking his back for chickenpox spots, but they both knew exactly what she was doing. The next night she tried again, only this time she was more cunning. Cunning means sneaky. She stood out the sight, out of sight behind the bedroom door, and fished for the tangy t-shirt with a rod and line. But the hook snagged on the duvet, it got caught on the duvet, by mistake, and when she reeled in her catch, the cover rose from the bed like a lumpy ghost, leaving Alistair McAllister exposed to the sharp night air. Cold toes made him wake with a start, and cold toes foiled his mother's plan for the second night in a row. By the third night, Alistair McAllister had wised up. He installed a burglar alarm in his T-shirt with heat-sensitive pads that could detect even the featheriest of touches. When his mother slipped her sewing scissors up the armhole to cut the T-shirt in two, a socking great siren howled inside Alistair McAllister's pillow. He jumped up and stared his mother in the eye. I wish you'd get the message, he said. Me and the whales don't want to be separated. At the end of the year, the t-shirt was so hard and crusty that Alistair McAllister looked like an armadillo, because armadillos have a big hard shell on their back. It smelled worse than a scared skunk in a sauna and made the house hum like a two-storey stink bomb. The niff billowed out of the chimney in gassy green clouds and oozed through the brick walls onto the street. His neighbours moved out, local buses changed their routes and aliens from out of space changed their course to avoid planet Earth. The Queen got a whiff of the t-shirt while sipping sweet sherry at a garden party and told the Prime Minister to write to Alistair McAllister's mother as a matter of supreme urgency. Dear Alistair McAllister's mother, Alistair McAllister's foul and funky Free the Whales t-shirt is burning a hole in the ozone layer. Wash it immediately or I shall send in the army. Love, the Prime Minister. I hope you enjoyed the first two chapters and I will finish chapters three to five tomorrow. Goodbye.